Now that we've looked at our data, made sure that everything looks okay and is in the right place, now let's look at one of the sample apnea underscore proc.py scripts to actually analyze the data. So currently I'm still in that FT directory. I'm going to go up one directory by typing cd dot dot. And the script we're going to be using here is this so1.ap.simple. So I can open up with a text editor or again type cat and the name of the file. So all we're going to do here is overview this script and go over what each line does. So first of all, subject ID that tells you the label that's going to be given for this analysis. The data sets again are in that FT directory. And so you can see it's the slash means within that directory, select ft underscore epi underscore r. And this question mark represents a wildcard for a single character. So recall that in this directory up here, we had r1, r2, and r3. We had three runs of data. So we'd have about 300 seconds of the participant doing something. There would be a break, and then the next scan would start. Do that three times. So we have one, two, and three. So this question mark is just a placeholder for that. And it's part of the language of Unix to fill in that question mark with whatever character is in that directory. Copy in that, that just makes a copy of your anatomical data set and stores it in a separate directory. So in here, ft, and it's going to be called ft underscore anat. Tcats remove first TRs. That means remove the first two volumes of each functional run. We do this because it can take a few scans to reach what's called a steady state. If you look at the time series of signal in a voxel for a functional scan, you'll usually see that the first couple of TRs have much higher signal than the rest of all the volumes. I use TR and volume interchangeably here. It's just every time that we actually acquire an image of the brain. In this case, every couple seconds or so. It has a relatively coarse temporal resolution. So regress stem times, we're now getting into actually setting up our model of what we think the activity in a given voxel should look like. So regress stem times, remember we had that AV visual and uh, AV auditory, right? So one condition, visual was reliable, and the other condition, auditory, was reliable. This asterisk is a wildcard grabbing one or more characters. So similar idea to this question mark, but the asterisk means select as many characters as possible until we come to the rest of this string right here. So it's going to grab AV1 and AV2. Regress stem labels, that's going to put a label on each condition. So what are we going to call those conditions? Well, first be aware of what order that these are going to be selected. This wildcard is going to grab first the visual reliable and then the auditory reliable ones. So we're going to call it uh, VREL for visual reliable and AREL for auditory reliable. This regress basis specifies the basis function we want to use for our model. So in this case we're using what's called a block design, right? So we're going to be convolving an incomplete gamma function with a boxcar. So just think of like a, a large rectangle kind of moving along in space from left to right. And once it hits a certain time, in other words, when the participant either saw an auditory or visual stimulus, it's going to increase. Okay, it's going to start looking like uh, a boxcar convolved with an incomplete gamma function. It's really hard to describe in words without showing it, but later on we'll show you what the ideal response function will look like. So these Two numbers, these arguments we have in here, 20 means for 20 seconds, and 1, I believe, is the upper limit of the activation. Regress, EST, blur, ERSTs, don't worry too much about that. That's just going to give an estimate of the blur or the amount of, of noise or smoothing in the error time series, so anything that we haven't modeled. That's useful for actually making an estimate of how many voxels we need in a given cluster to pass a certain threshold. Lastly, this regress options for 3D deconvolve, that's going to get into actually making contrast between different parameter estimates. So in a given voxel, how much should the activity increase for the visual reliable as compared to the auditory reliable conditions? 
So GLT sim, this uppercase sim means do it symbolically. It's going to be virel and implied as a plus one in front of it, but since it's not there, it's still implied that it's a positive one. And then this negative means apply negative one weight to auditory reliable. And the label is going to be V minus A. So that's a contrast of visual minus auditory. We only have one contrast, but we give it the number one anyway. So if we had two contrasts like auditory minus visual, then we'd say GLT label two, A minus V. That is the AFNIPROC.py script. We'll be talking more about that. But first, we're going to get into more of the pre-processing steps of this sample data set.